to break you You're amazing the way you are I can see those tears for them But don't allow them to Don't allow them to break you You're amazing the way you are
world is weightless If anything it's you that caused this When I keep falling through my heart cracks It's you that turns around this whole mess I try to fight my way through darkness If anything it's you that stop this When I'm surrounded by the heartless It's you that turns around this whole mess
but don't allow them to don't allow them to break you you're amazing the way you
allow them to break you You're amazing the way you are I can see those tears for them But don't allow them to Don't allow them to break you You're amazing the way you are Welcome back, you filthy Valorant casuals, to the Collegiate Valorant League hosted by the Gamers EDU, hosted by me. I am your part-time host, slash full-time Reina Lovebot Queen B. Tonight we have three super stacked matches lined up for you guys. Kicking it off tonight will be T A M U White versus T S U S B. But before we get into your regularly scheduled Valorant head click in, I did want to welcome everyone in, especially since we are reaching the end of week five of the CBL. And I did want to thank our sponsors for helping us get here. 
HyperX, MSI, AimLab, Radiance.gg, Twitch Student. These are just some of the organizations that are supporting us in our mission to not only showcase the talent of all of these lovely, lovely, and very, very talented collegiate players, but are helping us spread awareness to mental health within the gaming community. That is one of our focuses here at the Gamers EDU, and we really, really, really do appreciate your guys' support. You can find all the information on our sponsors along with exclusive discount codes and offers made exclusively for our community down below in our panel. Make sure you take full advantage of them while you still can. And now, before I pass it over to your all-knowing, your all-seeing casters for the evening, Eli the Curry and Ash Khan, I'm going to send you guys on a quick little commercial break, but I'll see you guys in chat. Bye, guys.
Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another night, the Collegiate Valorant League, brought to you by the Gamers EDU. I am Eli the Curry, joined by uh, yours truly, Ashgon. Yes, and we are here for a full night of Valorant action. We've had a couple forfeits, a couple movements around. Things get a little weird, but we have three full matches to bring to you all tonight. We are going to be getting underway in short order. But before we do that, we want to say thank you to all of our partners, uh, the good folks over at MSI, as well as Clear Eye View, the California State University Entertainment Alliance, AIM Lab, HyperX, as well as Ritual Motion, and the folks over at Radiance. Dot gg all of our wonderful title sponsors uh ashcon this week well we've had a lot of dqs this week and i think i know why some would say that it's because college players are in the middle of midterms and therefore certain things may take priority but i know and you know as a able valorant player that it's because we're on icebox this week and everybody wants to stay where it's warm <laughs> exactly that i 100 percent agree with that one i think midterms is just like a facade to avoid this map as as much as possible it is what it is i am uh not gonna say any specific names but uh listen folks we know ducks when we see them heading away from the icebox pond but fortunately for us we've got six teams tonight who are willing to brave the elements get themselves into this map uh the first match which you see we are underway of agent selection will be texas a&m going up against california state university san bernardino um, so we're going to get into this. These two squads, I think this will be one of the first times, uh, if I'm recalling correctly, that we see Texas A&M's uh, Diamond Squad, or at least I think this might be the first time for me in recent memory uh, to see them. So I'm excited to see what they've got for us, as well as San Bernardino coming back. The real SB, not any other SB that I might get confused. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Uh so right now, looking up at this agent selection, I'm seeing something that's pretty standard across the board, a Killjoy pick and definitely Sage Select picks. Um, Sage is very common. She, she uh, is picked to wall that tube on the defensive side of Icebox that leads into Kitchen. And um, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited right now to see gameplay out of uh, Loki. I think I was telling you, Eli, I've played against him a couple times, and he has definitely put me in my place. So I'm hoping to see him pop off with the team of five. Oh. Hopefully we uh, well, we get a good start here. And then, of course, uh, right now we are starting with CSU San Bernardino on the attacking side, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. yes we are. And so we're going to see how they kick off this map here on Pistol Round very shortly. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the mentality is for these two teams, how they're going to get underway. This is a one map series, so we'll just be on Icebox and the team that wins the first to 13 rounds will be the team to take the victory in today's tilt. Uh, and so, you know, you talked about the composition. We see a couple of shared agents. We see Omen and uh, Sage on both squads, but we've got a couple differences. And just before we get into this, uh, I want to ask you, what do you think about this choice here for Rays and Phoenix? here on the side of san bernardino uh it's a very aggressive selection what do you think of that as we head into this pistol round well uh i'm going to say that they're more a oriented characters because a is a site that's very tight a lot of close corners and phoenix of course has that curveball roundabout flash and the the utility as we see already coming out from san bernardino the raised boomba and the nate clear out a site very quickly and easily and you see already texas a m already being pushed off the site low-key deep into streams I'm Headshot through the smoke by Explicit Titan. Would like to say that's due to aim labs, but you know, when you can't see, you can't really call it a target, huh? I mean, you just call it, you call it the force, right? Indeed. The force was one with him today. Rio's covering the flank for SB. Coming back uh, as all four Texas a &M players are spotted on the site. Explicit Titan finding another pick and falling out. Miller time retaking on Lazy with a Deagle headshot and Explicit with his third. Ghost headshot of the round on Rios to secure a first point for Texas A&M. Well, you mentioned whether or not the aim labs helped through the smoke. I don't know if it did there, but the other two kills for that round from Explicit Titan certainly assisted there. And and I will say this as well from Explicit Titan. The movement was very strong because they were getting tagged up as they moved out of that uh, that hanging box in the middle of the map. They got themselves out of that. 
in a situation that a lot of other agents would be stuck in, right? You get tagged up a couple of times. You're not, your movement is going to be heavily impacted. But Titan was able to get out of the way and then get themselves another couple of kills. So we'll see what the response is from San Bernardino as they have to load up with more pistols. We see a few SMGs coming out here from Texas A&M, but a mostly economic round on their side as well, at least to start out with. So here we see San Bernardino with a very aggressive push into mid and up too, but they're immediately caught in fire with Jorks taking out Abelito with the headshot with that Spectre, TZD with the Ghost, Jorks with the second Spectre spray down. Here we have a little bit of a fight between Miller and Marinus, <laughs> Myron, uh, and uh, he's going to go ahead and take that fight. Raze, see, taking that Spectre for a trade, ending that round. I feel like I butchered that name, so I'm going to have to take some time to reread it in a second. That's all right. I was gonna think you're doing a great job and it looks like uh, Texas A&M doing another great job there. It was a really aggressive uh, mentality from San Bernardino. They took those fights, even though they were at angles that I would not say suited pistols to SMGs, but I, I understand the aggressiveness. And if you're San Bernardino now, you know going into this round, you're two down, but you're able to buy this, you're rifled up. It's a bonus round opportunity here for Texas A&M. So we'll see what happens here. As you know, San Bernardino would love to take similar fights along the same routes, but Explicit Titan says, I don't care what you're rocking if I one tap you with this Deagle. Oh man, now, truly that is Aim Lab's aim. There's no doubt about it. And we go working his way up, spotted by the turret and now caught by the Nanoswarm. TZD is aware of his presence and he's gonna go ahead and perhaps contest with reinforcements inbound from the side of Kitchen. And A, Texas A&M deciding to fully give up A, leave one for the flank and coming in. But Abelito will find one Miller time, taken out with the headshot from a Vandal. And here comes up with the Sage Wall. Mira is going to go ahead down with the plant. Bomb is now ticking. Got one. Whoa, Abelito finds a second one. TZD trades it out with the Spectre. I like that turnaround from TZD too. Turned around and grabbed another Spectre so they wouldn't have to reload. And got the kill with it as well. Layer. As Myra with the big flank gets to there, raising TZD fall. It's explicit Titan left here. They have salvaged the Vandal. They get the first kill on Myra. They're going to have a 1v1, but they don't turn the corner in time. Rios with the superior positioning secures the first round of the map for San Bernardino. Definitely that B main area of... Uh... Just, just coming out of B main on towards the site, like that double hallway type of format. And then you can also get on top with the box. A whole lot you got to check there before you re-enter into that site. And Explicit Titan was definitely caught there. Uh, great positioning by Rios, as you said. Sometimes it is uh, an element of strategy over pure gunplay as demonstrated there. Uh, we've seen Explicit Titan is not somebody from the looks of things you really want to get into gunfights with. So if you can get the first shot, you'll definitely take it. As we see Titan there, oh, of course, God. getting two to the name. What a job here again. And that's two members of San Bernardino down before they really can infiltrate the site. It's a great start to round number four here for Texas A&M, but things not all cut and dry as the spike goes down. So the objective changes. If you're San Bernardino, if you can make this Valiant defense, you don't need to survive this round. You just need the spike to go off. And if you can do that, you will have tied up the score. It's going to be hard to do as you see Texas A&M beginning the effort. They're going to clear the spike here. The EPUs the begin. It is halfway done and it's almost all the way through. Oh my god, with one player left alive, Rios unfortunately unable to stop that DP. He's taking out three. It's a very aggressive retake. Once the wall was broken, I kind of wondered what angle Texas or uh, San Bernardino had because you could see the way that the Sage Wall was set up. It kind of like, as soon as the, the wall was broken, the spike was revealed. And Texas A&M wasted zero time once they could see the spike. They immediately went for the defuse. They had the numbers. And it was too much for San Bernardino to overcome. So now they are down 3-1. to one, And the worst situation about it, you see here the eco reset happening now is uh, 
Ray is going to take out low key there. It has been tough goings for uh, any initiators on the side of San Bernardino. A lot of aggression mid from the side of Texas A&M, kind of forcing San Bernardino to go to both ends of A and B. Here we have Abelito yet again, but he's not going to get caught by that Nano Swarm a second time. He's going to go ahead and shoot it out, make his way forward. With Mira behind him, the plan is going to go down. TZD is going to go ahead and let it go through. But in retaliation, down goes the Killjoy ult. Rios is going to go ahead and put down a wall to secure a little bit of room for his team. But they're still going to get pushed off the site regardless. Smoked off. Yorks is going to find one. Lazy goes down. Myra with the ult. Joe Stopper does not fire. Or it does. Raze is able to get out of danger with the dismiss. Find Rios and be made and Miller. Is going to take out Abelito, there. securing a fourth round for Texas A&M. A flawlessly executed retake by Texas A&M. They vacate the uh, B site. Well, really, it's just uh, uh, was the TZD right who just steps off and says, "Yo, they're coming through for the plant. I'm going to plant myself if y'all don't mind." And that sets up all the angles that Texas A&M needs. They set up and get the kills. But you can look at these scoreboards right now. The the pure difference in KDA, which we always stress doesn't tell you the whole story, but I think for the first five rounds of this match, it does tell you a lot. Texas A&M is so happy to take a fight because they've come out on top over and over again. It really feels like San Bernardino is going to have to figure out a way to isolate a couple of these Texas A&M players, a couple of these Aggies, and get them off in a couple of maybe you know 2v1 fights, right? Take them out without it being an even tilt because if Texas A&M can square up, they look like... They're ready to bear. Well, you know, Loki can just shoot somebody off screen. That, that also works. There we go. Now Miro's going to go ahead and make it in, but finds three people staring right at him, taken out by York. York is going to get TZD up, who was just taken out by Lazy, and get the pick on Rios. Explicit Titan here with the B main flank. And is he able to find Abelito? He does, and he's going to go ahead and find Loki, who killed his ult and the body. 1v3 Texas AM on top yet again, and Ray's finishes Lazy off for a fifth round on the board. That is the big flaw of that Phoenix ult. He must return to where he started when the ult did uh when he did the ult to begin it. So if you can punish him and take him out there and find where he's respawning, he is vulnerable for a extremely long period of time. That's just what happened there. You mentioned explicit Titan with the flank and just the rest of Texas AM holding it down and winning these fights. Yeah, that, that timing was a little bit unlucky for um, for Loki there because Abelito was shot as soon as Loki's ult went off. So he had no no choice but to kind of stick to that, that fight there. Oh, there oh. goes Loki again. And Miller time here is going to get the kill with the operator. It almost feels a little bit like overkill here. As you see Race with the... The headshot on the angle. Rays with their third kill of the round. It's an A-site push and it's an A-site slaughter. As Rios is the last one left. Rays gets four kills on that round. And Texas A&M looks like they are keen to get themselves out of the icebox and back into the warm areas of Texas because they are burning through this first round. Most definitely. Right now for San Bernardino, I'm looking for maybe a little bit more hmm, opportunity to trade. I'm not seeing San Bernardino kind of enter into these sites as pairs, but rather as individuals. And they're so far apart from each other that when they do get picked and these fights do happen, no one is there to kind of even up the numbers. Yeah, we've mentioned that quite a bit when we talk about how important it is not just to, you know, try to win the 1v1 fights, but to be in position to avenge someone who loses a 1v1 fight, to trade out efficiently uh, so that your team has a higher chance of success instead of uh, situations where we see here, Loki gets a kill and then doesn't have to engage again. So Loki gets to set back up, kind of get ready, take another fight, and was very near to uh, really well timing that... Uh, that, that pop shot for the head there is it just lazy who instead gets George takes them out explicit Titan finds Abelito but there's Myra with a flank this is the first time we've really seen explicit Titan getting taken out in short order that's a great Ray. round I was gonna say it's a great round right now for San Bernardino they are up three to two but Miller time gets that kill on Abelito who does come back 
We'll see if Militime is still holding that operator. As you see TZD moving into this A site on the Vandal, but they're taken out by Myro, who got their second kill of the round. Myro's looking good. Militime has opted for the Vandal. There's a better choice here to try to reclaim the site. But the retaliation from Rios is there. That's what we're talking about. Moving in after your teammate falls to finish the fight that they started. Yes, indeed. That's exactly the demonstration that we need at the beginning of the round. We're seeing it there at the end. You know, uh, SB with the ad advantageous position. So now, if we see that incorporated more and more, we're going to see them win back these rounds. They definitely want to end this, this half with at least five to their name. Uh, and they are in position to do so. They all have the rifles that they need. They just have to be wary of Miller Time, who's bringing that operator and setting it right on the table and making his presence known. You just see Miller Time stepping up here, wants to get another shot off. Can't find the mark here. That does let San Bernardino know that the operator is back on the table. There's Explicit Titan with another early kill, this time taking out Lazy. Members of San Bernardino finding out where Explicit Titan is standing at the absolute worst of times over and over again. No, you but don't. there's some really strong work there from Loki tapping it up and they take out George Ooh. right away. Loki with a confident position there with great shooting as well to take this back into the advantage of San Bernardino. Sabolito finds Miller time and is now 4-2 again here. San Bernardino with a chance. Maybe cut this lead down to three. Still no spike planted, but at this point, they can kind of hat up and go hunting. As we see Loki spotted out. Ray's not going to rush it there. Lines it up, gets their third. Amazing patience, too, to not, you know, immediately fire at the first sighting, but instead wait, turn the corner, and make sure everything is in position for that one tap. Didn't want to give himself up, perhaps, to, uh, you know, stepping out from the cover that was positioned and then getting caught. You never know when somebody is posting up. See, the spike has gone down here. TZD is alone. Well, they may be able to make some magic work as far as the kills go here, but they're not going to have a lot of time to move into the site. We'll see if they just look to go for weapons or if they go down because abelito has got position on high and is able to get that kill. And it is now 6-3, to three, Texas A&M lead, but San Bernardino finally getting a little bit of life in them in these later rounds. They're definitely showing that they're ready to fight back, and now that they have three ultimates on the board, some very aggressive ults for sight taking, especially the showstopper and the run it back, we're going to see some, hopefully something this round that'll, you know, sort of guarantee their victory and perhaps take Texas A&M's economy down a notch. Of course, the retake ults on Texas A&M will appear not this round, but next round, with 4-7 to seven being there for the Killjoy Ultimate, as well as the Sage Resurrection. We aim down the sights here of Explicit Titan, who has picked up the Operator for this round. TZD once again moving around B-side. But it's a split right now, at least on the side of, uh, excuse me, San Bernardino, as we see their race investigating the B-side, but it looks like... You know, Ashkan, you mentioned this. They're focused on the A site as Titan shuts down another low key Phoenix ultimate. Oh, of course, the Titan gets full flash, but is able to narrowly escape. The knives come out, and here's a little bit of a mess, but Loki comes out on top. Mirror Showstopper lands on Ray's. The A site is open. We have Yorks coming in really quickly through the screens, controlling mid alongside his Omen. TZD coming around, trying to take the stairs, sprays through the smoke, finds Abelito. Three to four retake situation here. Very much possible to win these, but SB is not looking to go down easily. And I like this aggressive spacing right now from San Bernardino. They are right on top of this spike here. They're going to contest this heavily, but it's Miller time who finds a shot there on Myra. To run. You see the smoke's coming out here. There's Rio's going to be able to set up here. Pressure this spike, forced it to go down. Jorks does get that shot, but Lazy punishes. The defuse attempt there, TZD won't have time. And there's Lazy there to cut off the exfiltration as well. TZD falls to the spikes. Would have fallen to Lazy as well. So it's another round for San Bernardino. And as bad as it looked just a few rounds ago, it is only six to four. And San Bernardino looks like they have found a second win. 
Yes, indeed. They're looking. Things are looking up for them. And again, Texas A&M, we have that Killjoy ult up in two, and the Yorks' is Sage ult up in one. So they could be willing to sort of play a retake here or the next round. But Santa Barbara, as long as they play their cards right and get those ultimates out early, can guarantee a fifth round should everything go according to plan. But TZD is going to be right there on B main to get rid of Myra, who aggressively pushes in with a satchel. And Reyes finds Abelito, who decided to teleport up top. That sound cue really gives you away. Got to play a little bit of mind games a couple rounds before that. This has been uh, some... It's been tough starts a lot for San Bernardino, Texas A&M. Just, I mean, the aim on these these Aggies has been incredible thus far. And now with another uh, five to three agent advantage, uh, you know, awaiting potentially a Sage ult. But after that kill there from Jorks onto low key, I think we can assume. Oh, well, we're definitely not getting anything out of a, the Sage this round. As you see, Rio's falls here is all up to lazy they get that kill on titan that's good shooting and i tell you what 1v4 45 seconds left this is not as impossible as it might otherwise be <laughs> miller time with a dot from across the map Last shutting down all hopes of the comeback and guaranteeing a lead for texas a&m as we go into the last round of the first half i'll tell you what miller time ain't playing valor he's playing duck hunt and he was just on the prowl for sova Oh yeah, no laughing dogs today. It's only cackling Aggies as Miller Time has been on point. You see this, every member of Texas A&M up in the KDA. Everybody positive for them thus far. For San Bernardino, nothing of the sort. And all the same, this is not anywhere near uh, as big a deficit as it very well could have been, right? San Bernardino has done well enough for themselves that even if they don't get this round, although certainly they'll want to, but they'll have to do it without Abelita, who falls early to raise. Uh, San Bernardino, I feel like they've kept this relatively close. They're definitely within striking distance. As we see there, it's Loki and Titan. They seem like they turned at the same time, but it's Titan who finds the kill. They find a second on Myra before Rios is able to get the response. We'll have to see oh, about this. He's gonna take out. He's gonna take the same angle that Explicit Titan was on, and find Lazy on it as well. Yorks is gonna revive Explicit Titan. And there's another one v five situation. Rios probably was trying to look for the orb there on A main to get his ultimate up, but unfortunately cannot find it. But as long as he gets one pick here, he might be able to get his odds a little bit in his favor. Four v two definitely better than one v five. See every member of Texas A&M. They've kind of lined up here to chase down Rios. Who's there? It is. It's Titan in the. It's Titan in the air. It's death from the skies. Oh my God! What is this? I mean, there is some legit. I I don't think we've seen as aggressive and bloodthirsty a defense as that one. I think that might be. That might take the cake as far as we want to be done defending now type of mentality. And Texas A&M surely has brought it. They are wasting no time here and they have a big lead heading into the second half. Now with Texas A&M on the attack, it is up to San Bernardino to make this comeback on the defensive side. Ashkan, what do you think about their odds here to try to recoup this deficit on the defending side of Icebox? So the utility works both ways, right? That raise utility, while it can also be used to enter into that A side, can definitely be used to defend it. Of course, we have C Meyer actually set up on B main instead. So perhaps going for a little bit more of an aggressive play, maybe trying to mimic what Texas A&M was doing to them. Here we have Rios in that natural spot for Sage in the kitchen. Myra is gonna find TCG off screen. We're gonna have a little bit of a fight between Rios and Explicit, but Titan okay. is definitely going to come out on top with the way he's been playing this entire game, Myra is going to go ahead and try to come around for the retake to find Ryze. Meanwhile, Miller Time is going to find both Emilino and Loki. This earlier fight breaks out with Ryze. Texas A&M, 4-1, make it 4-0. to none. Ryze finds Lazy with the Frenzy headshot. I don't know if Ryze turned the other way on purpose or if that was just a bit of a uh, mishearing, but that definitely turned into a 360 no-scope. I say no-scope because you can't scope it. <laughs> <laughs> that weapon with that pistol, but uh, Ray's having a fun time there getting a kill. Texas A&M with a big lead. I think one of the things, uh, you know, we saw there when Rios and uh, Titan fought there, you saw the difference, I think, in their in their cursor, right? The reticle placement as mm -hmm. Rios was forced to try to adjust and aim upwards towards the head there. Titan hasn't had that issue, and I think it's something we've seen out of every member of Texas A&M 
they are looking to hunt heads. They are looking to get the one touch, two tap type of fights. And I think that's really something that's pushing them ahead of San Bernardino over the course of uh, these 13 rounds. And right there, we see it again, right? Mira not ready, not quite ready to see an opponent outside of that smoke, not ready to track. Here we have Explicit Titan with his teammate. Miller time up in mid and is going to aggressively get in the face of Abelito while TZD takes out Lazy. That is the kind of that is the kind of movement that you're confident your opponent cannot keep track of you. And it is difficult to to track an opponent who goes up vertically, you know. I mean, just trying to move I mean I'm I'm doing it right now, no one can see me, but like moving your mouse straight up like that, trying to push it forward is is not easy, especially when Jets can move left and right midair as well. And shoot at you. Let, let's let's also add in what is probably the most stressful part of trying to track uh, a jet. If you can see her, she can probably see you. And if a jet can see you, she's probably shooting at you. So see the line up here. Myra trying to get that kill, but I respect the respect. You saw what happened. Myra took a couple of shots and said, no, I'm not going to trust it. We know that. Uh, Texas A&M still on their pistols right as they go into this bonus round, but we've also seen the threat level they provide even on these SMGs, even on these Deagles. They are not to be trifled with. And that's a smart choice from Myra, and it's a strong defense at least from the first 20 or so seconds for San Bernardino. Nobody's fallen. And they haven't given away too much information either. I also have to really point out TZD's setup here as Killjoy to make sure that Santa Bar... Um, San Bernardino doesn't push into them. That's another thing that, that is really keeping them solid. And Yorks is actually going to punish Lazy for just that, just for walking up a little bit too far. Loki alone on the A site. He's going to have someone come in from the back from the streams. But here he is alone, unable to spray down anybody. Taken out by TZD. Rios is going to go ahead and trade out Yorks for a Sage v. Sage situation. Well, Abelito gets that angle there, but isn't able to get it. And that second shot actually doesn't punish them too heavily. They're able to take out Miller Time and find a third as TZD doesn't respond to their teammate dying. Are we in ranks right now? Is that what's happening? Oh! Abelito almost there. Uh, kind of able to get his head above and maybe attempted a head glitch there, but Reyes is ready to flick. I mean... Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, it's it's looking like uh, the Aggies have come to play and San Bernardino is just trying to keep up. And it's not enough. If you're not on the first foot with this Texas A&M Texas squad, it just looks like they are moving too fast to be kept up with. We see here, Jorks. We are not about to see. Are we really going to see a double Odin set up? We have, are, is that double Odin? Oh no. You can't be serious. You cannot be for real. That's disrespectful. See, explicit Titan, the jet on an oh, Odin, and she. God. They can first. No, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> All right, there's Abelito taking him down, but if you're San Bernardino, are you ready? There's another Odin. His <laughs> choice is. One enemy remaining. Jorks, Ray's fine kill. CZZ takes out Abelito and Texas AM with the memes. That was that double Odin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I disrespected the Aggies. That was triple Odin on attack. Please. I uh, somebody stop the somebody stop this man. Somebody stop Explicit Titan before he goes any further. I mean He's he's proven time and time again that he can aim, but to do it with, across all these different weapons, all these different platforms, all these different heights and angles, it is just it's too much. It's too much. Well, it looks like the Get stoppage will way. come from victory here for Texas A&M. You hear the ults come out. This is the potential final round if San Bernardino does not find something oh. to do there. But Loki does a great job there. Takes out Titan, who did not arm himself with anything but a judge, I should note. Little... little oh, wait, I'm sorry. That was a... Uh... Hey, no, explicit Titan is falling. Yeah, they stayed down as well as the uh, res came to Miller time. Loki finds Jorks, however. And then gets a third right as the run it back old ends low key, keeping San Bernardino in this. It's just Miller time and Rays here to work against four standing members of San Bernardino. Now Rays is in a very good position to be able to find at least one pick, but he needs to immediately rotate off and find himself 
safe, but he cannot as Loki chases him down to find four. Miller time still left alive. Will Loki go for the ace here? We'll have to see. The operator is still in the hands of Miller. It seems that he's going to go ahead and try to save three versus one. Ow. And he's... Oh! Okay! He's going to throw it off the map. Well, it's a... Uh... Well, I understand the decision making here. If you're Miller time, you know that your odds of winning this aren't great. It is Loki's ace here, but it's uh, basically a, uh, you know, you know, it's kind of just a, I don't know exactly what you want to call it, uh, but uh, just kind of a done deal there as Miller time just says, you know what, we're better off just egoing it out, resetting everything and starting over again. But I'll tell you what, if you're Loki, uh, it may not mean too much in terms of only getting one round, but it means a lot to show that there's still fight left in the team. And you know Loki's got to be hoping the rest of San Bernardino is going to rally around that example. You don't need an ace every round, but you definitely need people to step up and play at a higher caliber. Here we see Abelito immediately teleporting up top. Very dangerous to get shot out by raising a crossfire by one other TZD taking out one as well. Ray's finding a second one in Rios, and it is now two for four. San Bernardino not looking too great with that two-person deficit. Explicit Titan working their way quietly up into B. They're going to get spotted by this Boombot. Lazy walking around. Mira with the Showstopper in hand, trying to move, find a target to shoot, but unfortunately cannot. It's going to run out. And then Titan gets... No. That, the, that was a knife. That's just a knife in the back. No. Titan, Titan you're memeing. You're no. memeing hard, Titan. You're memeing hard, Titan, and Lazy's gonna stop that. Lazy will get the Vandal up. They are at uh, full health here. Only have light shield, so they're not at 50 armor. Only 25, but tell you what, with the info, they might be able to gather. There's a few shock darts out as well. This is not 100% done. But it is rapidly getting to that space as the time blinks down. Lazy cannot be like their name. Actually, they may be out of time. This may be all done here. See the knives out from Texas A&M. They're happy to try to meme it out. They're not going to be able to get it. Lazy has no choice but to try to defuse, but they won't be able to. It's Texas A&M who takes it 13 to 5. Well, took us a while to get here. It was a delayed first match, and Texas A&M was eager to make up the time. They get out to a fast start and never look back. Ashkan, as we take a look at the scoreboard, what's the story of the match for you when you look at the performance of these two teams? I think, I mean, you know, we can get into theory as much as we want. We can talk about the map as much as we want. We can talk about Asian picks as much as we want. But at the end of the day, Race and Explicit Titan came up and simply executed what they need to execute a cut above the rest. Yeah, I and... mean, look you, you look at this, I mean, 22 and 5 is about as dominant a performance as you're going to have in any game of uh, Valorant. I, I really, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say about it. <laughs> Just like you, I just got a bit of at a loss for words, except that if you're Texas A&M, you're happy to be heading to the second half of the season with this type of momentum. If you're San Bernardino, you're going to have to go to the drawing board and figure out what it is you want to do and how you want to move forward because you're going to have to come with more than that. But we know they're capable of it, and we look forward to seeing them try that again next week. But we've got more matches coming up later today. This is not our final match. This is actually just the first of three. Uh, we are going to be going to break, and when we come back, we are going to have Sacramento State going up against the University of Hawaii, our second match of the day, still on Icebox. This is the Collegiate Valorant League, brought to you by the Gamers EDU. For OG Ashkan, I am Eli the Curry, and we will see you all on the other side of this break. Don't allow them to break you. You're amazing the way you are. I can see those tears for them. But don't allow them to. Don't allow them to break you. You're amazing the way you are.
back your filthy Valorant casuals to the Collegiate Valorant League hosted by the Gamers UDU, hosted by me. I am your part-time host slash full-time arena love bot queen B. Tonight we do have two more matches left for you guys. The next one between between Sac State versus Hawaii B. But before we get into your regularly scheduled Valorant ahead click it. I did want to welcome all of you guys in, especially since we are reaching the end of week five. And I did want to thank our sponsors for helping us get here. HyperX MSI, who is our title sponsor, Team IQ, Ritual Motion. These are just some of the organizations that are supporting us in our mission, not only to showcase all of the incredibly talented collegiate players that we have in our league, but also to help spread awareness to mental health within the gaming community, because it is one of our main focuses here at the Gamers EDU. And we really, really do appreciate all of your support. You can find all the information on our sponsors along with exclusive discount codes and offers made exclusively for you guys if you check out our panels down below. So make sure you take full advantage of all of those offers while you still can. And now, before I pass it over to your all-seeing, your all-knowing, your very wise casters for the evening, Eli the Curry and Ash Khan, I'm going to send you guys on a quick little commercial break. Make sure you guys are hydrated. Make sure you guys are stretching. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in chat. Bye, guys. Don't allow them to Don't allow 
down a ladder to down a ladder to break you. You're amazing the way you are.
You know I've never felt this way less If anything it's you that causes this When I keep falling through my heart cracks It's you that turns around this whole mess I try to fight my way through darkness If anything it's you that stop this When I'm surrounded by the heartless It's you that turns around this whole mess all right everyone welcome back to the collegiate valorant league hosted by the gamers edu i am eli the curry joined by yours truly ashcon here for another round of amazing casting yes sir we are back we are going to get into game number two this between sacramento state and the rainbow warriors of the university of hawaii but before we get into this first to 13 action we want to thank our partners over at msi as well as the folks at clear eye view the california state university entertainment alliance as well as radiant.gg ritual motion our title sponsor hyper x as well as the folks over at aim labs and a reminder that all proceeds from the gamers edu to go out to the gamers outreach which is a program that is bringing gaming and gaming related uh accessories over to children and hospitals folks if you haven't checked out any of those um charity streams or any of that type of work make sure that you do because it is uh honestly it's one of the best things that we can hope to do it is one of the higher callings to use what you are good at in this case valorant or talking about valorant or playing video games in general and bring it to people and children who are in a different place in a difficult place but for right now, we focus on our own version of a difficult place. That's Icebox. We're back at it again. Ashcon here. It's Sacramento State, and it's the University of Hawaii. Uh, right now, Sacramento State flirting with that slightly unified look. We're a little late on it. They've kind of gotten off of it. But uh, what do you think out of what we're maybe seeing out of Hawaii, who looks like they are just about to lock into uh, their agents? So yet again, we see this kind of standard comp, and I think we saw, was it uh, not San Bernardino, but Texas A&M running that same comp with the Killjoy Sage, uh, Omen Jairena, right? So here we see it again, and definitely a strong comp we saw before, but of course the players were strong as well. So here, you know, we have to see that Select same performance to watch it work in that same way. So that is Hawaii on the defense. And then Sac State... Pretty, pretty standard comp. I love the Sova pick. And again, we have that raise for the uh, for the A-site clear, A-site hold, that nade, and that boom bot. So I'm hoping to see a lot of information slow play out of 
Sac State. I'm assuming that's how they're going to kind of get themselves into these sites, especially now that they're starting on attack, which I assume is their preferred site, uh, preferred side. But, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. And just for anyone who's watching, on the side of Hawaii, uh, Killjoy player, we're going to be, uh, username is Kiru, Kiru Joy. So we're just going to say Killjoy, I guess. And then uh, for their jet, we have been told we're going to be saying Wan Juni or Wan Jun. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They, yeah, I appreciate you uh, doing that. That, that uh, Ashkind, man, you always come with it, man. Doing that research, that bi, uh, you know, that, that bilingual, that omni, that omni disciplined research, getting the word out, helping me, because I was going to look there like, well, we're going to be saying Killjoy without any of the confidence. So uh, we'll get into this now. We've got Sacramento State here on the attack to begin with. We're going to have Hawaii on the defense to start out with. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. <laughs> I've never done that before. I always want to do that. I, I, <laughs> I got to leave that to the uh, the other professionals. So here we have Sac State with a very, very quick entry into A. Able, really able to make room for his team as he goes in fights. Killjoy, Killjoy goes down from Darian's Frenzy, and a Dink goes out onto Magic Heat, which decides to retreat into the screen. We have Wanjuni up here in heaven, but gets caught by Quiz. Sac Able finding unsubscribed with another headshot, but actually finishing him off this time. Magic takes Quiz, and Able finishes Magic. Well, that's a good way to start right we like to start a strong a site push there in the pistol round for sacramento state they waste no time and uh really overwhelm hawaii there absolutely so now that they have this buy up here the specters on the second round it looks like they're more oriented towards b and i think they might just be going for the same strategy of just kind of walking in i mean abel was definitely not scared to push forward and so We'll see if that remains true here on round two. Quiz lurking in the mid with his smokes to kind of give this feeling of, of control over Hawaii. And yet Wanjuni is going to push into the smoke either way and find Quiz with his pants down. He was ready for another smoke, but unfortunately did not go out. Wanjuni picks up the Spectre and unsubscribe takes out Abel. That two Spectres down here on the side of Sac State. Shock Dart goes out by Trippy. Yeah, the shock dart is wide, but before that, Trippy was able to find a kill. And you see the spike is down, so Trippy gets their second kill of the round there on Kiahi. This is very doable still for Sacramento State. They're even up on agents. Well, now they're even higher up on agents. It's unsubscribed and kill Joy Fall. It's Magic left alone there next to the spike. Unfortunately, the spike is next to some very angry Sacramento State players as Trippy gets the 3K and they win round number two. Absolutely. I really liked the uh, the play from Sacramento State Mitchell to kind of turn around and and watch that flank as Killjoy, you know, Kawhi's Killjoy was was there, right? Was was taking the very slow push up. And had they been caught, Sacramento State, you know, that round would have gone completely differently for them. So amazing sort of game sense to just kind of guess where Killjoy was going to be. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an element, I think, of experience. Uh, Sacramento State, they've been in the CVL since last season, and though their performance over the course of last season wasn't one that they would be necessarily proud of, there. you can definitely tell that this side has seen a lot of action here, but this is a gr much stronger start for Hawaii. Yahi and Wanjun get a pair of kills each. Yahi gets a second, looking for a third here. Mitchell will step forward and stop the bleeding. But not before almost everybody else on Sacramento State falls. It's unsubscribed. We'll unplug this round here. And that is a very strong bonus round victory for U of H. But you have to be expecting this if you are Sacramento State. That third round is really usually up in the air. Actually, it's usually for the team that has uh, lost the first couple of rounds. So now with rifles out, what do you expect to see moving forward in this fourth round? I think, you know, I always tend to not expect much in a round three when the team has already won the first two rounds because they always are tending towards the uh, the bonus round. So over here, I'm going to expect the same sort of aim precision that we've been seeing out of Sacramento State, but they're going to be in a just like that. Darian is going to pick out Killjoy on the A site. 
And Juan Juni, very aggressive with the trippy headshot. Backs away with the dash, does not allow himself to fall or be traded. 4v4 again, Hawaii. A little bit better off as Wanjuni gets healed. Magic spots that there's multiple enemies and decides to back off. Again, amazing play. Hawaii immediately coming in. Magic fit, finding Darian Mitchell. Getting Wanjun for a little bit of a trade. Three to three. Well, that was some great movement out of Magic and an even better chase down. And Magic is still up here to try to make this happen. As Mitchell gets to res their own Darian, it's Abel who steps forth to take the fight, but it's Magic who gets the kill. Darian falls right afterwards, and Unsubscribe get their second. So the res turns up nothing but more targets for Hawaii, but all this has been done. Quiz is still standing. The spike still ticking down here. If Quiz can manage to hold the spike just a little bit longer... Oh, never mind. It was getting defused the whole time, and Magic gets the third kill there. So Quiz loses the round and the gun. You see, Unsubscribed has the ultimate for that resurrection. And Hawaii has now evened this up two to two. But you look at the eco situation, and there is no parity there. It is all University of Hawaii. And I want to talk about that last round a little bit, Eli. Quiz definitely, you know, 1v2 is always possible here in Valorant especially with the different types of utility and the types of outplay that Omen can do. But unfortunately, that bomb plant was nowhere near anywhere that Quiz could cover. And that's something Sac State has to talk about a little bit more in the next round. Spike down. Well. But what we should be talking about is Wanjuni <laughs> on the operator, because that is a quick first peek. And oh, but Mitchell with the sheriff is not going to let him slide. I like what we saw there. Sacramento State split Juan Jun's attention. They didn't give him, uh, they didn't really give him a clean look, right? Kind of two targets flashing out of the peripherals. And Juan Jun didn't commit early enough to try to get one and then reset. And that gave Mitchell the time to get that shot, even things back up. And then while that's all happening, Sacramento State moving quickly again to get the spike down. Mitchell now sitting over there in the B site with the operator as Quiz takes out Magic. Mitchell gets a third. And Sacramento State looking like they might have a thrifty opportunity. Kiahi is still alive, still has a Vandal. But they've got to operate in a short amount of time across very dangerous territory. As you see, three angles being held here. And it's Quiz with a headshot oh, from God. downtown. What? Sacramento. Sacramento is dirty with these sheriff shots. It's directly into the head and nowhere else. And Mitchell, you know, just kind of, he saw that operator and he was just lusting after it. He said, this is your operator? No, 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 no. <laughs> this is my operator. I said, no, oh, I bought it. Don't y'all see? It's in my hands. Clearly, I bought it. I use this skin all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. What a, what a round there from Sacramento State. You know, I, you talked about Magic's movement and the round previous to the, the one we just saw. But this time, it's Sacramento State showing a little bit of movement on their own right as a team their formations just kind of boggling uh u of h and then with some peak shooting they're able to get themselves in we see darian here kind of look to put aim to the side here as they push that short corner hello killjoy goodbye killjoy could have done the same thing with the shotgun but hey why not with a little bit of overkill Absolutely. as we see there darian low on health but they know they can rely on their sage to come by get them that health up so you're trying to track Wan Jun, who has the uh, Blaze Storm up, but it's not doing much, and they are slowed off, so they've got to get out of there. Unsubscribe does find Mitchell. That helps, but you can see Unsubscribed extremely low, has to use the heal on themselves. Wan Jun still being zoned out of this A site. They are giving Wan Jun hell for trying to get into the site. As the spike is down and once again ticking away, U of H may have oh. to forfeit this round. They may have to just give it up and try to save. I didn't know that was an angle. Abel just taught me something today. There you go. Learn something new every day. You'll never lose. Metaphorically speaking, you could definitely lose and learn at the same time. But see, unsubscribed, able to get the kill there on Abel at the end of that round. Constellation victory here for Hawaii, who is kind of falling behind after that thrifty. Definitely broke the momentum they were expecting to have. And you can see how scattered their, uh, you know, their economy is. Unsubscribed is... You know, kitted up, has a Vandal, looks all right. But then you look up and down the rest of the roster, and they are kind of in pieces and patches as far as their equipment 
And their weapons go. So right now we're having a little bit of a weak a-hole on the side of Hawaii. We see that Killjoy is holding a fat donut still on the kills. And it is Abel who's going to take out Magic as well. So Killjoy is going to be left alone in that position. The blade is going to go out and she is going to fall to it. Just how speaking about a weak A, Sacramento State knows it already. They're going to go in and take out unsubscribed as well. Abel finding a second shot. And here comes Trippy along the flank, just making sure to hold spots. Kiahi in the mid, who's already taken out Darian. Mitchell is here holding the angle. Smoke comes out, blocking the line of sight. Abel spots him, crossing in. He is two to one and falls to Abel, giving him his third kill. One Juni with the classic coming out of kitchen gets oh, spotted. He was in team, and Abel is going to go for a fourth kill. But Trippy is already there. In the kitchen window, it is a race to see who can end Wanjuni first. Sac State is just playing game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's smart. And I think that's just a word to describe Sacramento State's mentality heading into this. They didn't over push that. They knew Wanjun was a threat. They weren't going to just let him walk around and do whatever. But they weren't going to come off of those smart positions. And so three rounds in a row here for Sacramento State. Hawaii, after that thrifty forced to you know save and save again so it's a big couple of rounds for sacramento state now here in this gun round again for hawaii they need to get things back under control or else they can see this uh round lead really starting to fall out of their favor and so now we sort of shifted positions a little bit more of an aggressive play kiahi falling to the hunter's fury magic is going to find someone else off screen taking off darian four to four one juni is a little bit low and so now unsubscribed is going to go ahead and pull off that heal to restore him but what is an issue with that sage heal is it gives off one juni's position and so now sack abel is going to peek and find one juni there you've got to know how, how that utility works killjoy back and hearing that sack state is coming onto the site mitchell is planting trippy finds unsubscribed it is two to four Hawaii not looking too good right now. That spike finally goes down and time is ticking. I think this is one of the, my favorite things about watching Sacramento State over the course of this map. It's just been how in, like economical they've been, right? They get a couple of picks and they just find an angle to make the objective work from there. It's been wonderful to watch them attack. It really shows you don't need to kill everybody on the other team, although it certainly helps. You need to create opportunities, right? You need to create angles. And that's what they've been playing for. It's how they've had this spike down so many times here. Whether they have the agent advantage or not, whether it's a strong advantage or not, they just don't give a lot of room for errors. You see Abel shutting down Killjoy's attempt to, you know, put some guns on the ground. And that's really all Killjoy had available at that moment, right? There wasn't really a chance to get a retake and a defuse spike. The round is basically won. And Sacramento State's just there to play cleanup and make sure that the damage done is minimal. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. Right now, uh, I mean, I have no words further from what from what you've said, Eli. Definitely, you kind of cleaned the brought those ends up together nice and well. It is simply us watching and waiting for Hawaii to switch something up with their defensive hold. Perhaps maybe even taking one of those aggressive plays. Well, we can mention this. That was Hawaii's gun round, and it kind of fizzled out. They really didn't even get to put up too much of a fight. Now they're here on pistols. You see Wan Jun is going to be able to get out of extreme danger there, but the site is being pushed up right now, perhaps over Baron here as Sacramento State doesn't overcommit to this, and I think that's a curious situation here as we see them pushing in. They're, they're taking their time with this, right? Winning it corner by corner instead of trying to push through Maybe find themselves on a bad angle, get right clicked by a classic or something unfortunate. Instead, Quiz gets the kill there on Killjoy. Wanjun falls. Kiahi is able to take out Darien. But, but Trippy gets the will response. Find well. Ooh, unsubscribe was a was a couple pixels off. All the same, Magic gets the kill there. They're still gonna have to walk into this 2v1. The spike is down, but they've got a phantom. This is very doable for Magic, but they've got to move swiftly. They got a Phantom and they got one more charge that heal. Two blinds. What is he going to do? Gets spotted by Trippy. And so now he's going to have to do his best to kind of turn this 2v1 into a set of 1v1. Look at that utility usage by Mitchell. That slowdown 
basically killing all the time magic was gonna have to try to get the spike and all they can do is try to play to put weapons on the ground and that's what mitchell is going to be happy to trade that off they don't escape this oh man, it just narrowly failed to escape the spike that's unfortunate but it's part of what we're talking about right sacramento state they're just playing you know playing the objective all right cool everybody here is going to die well who does that benefit the attackers the people who have the spike down they don't mind it they take that and they're up seven to two You know, we, we hear a lot of talk on Twitter and and in the chat and up in the upper ranks about how Valorant is such a defensive-sided game. All the maps are designed for the defense. But right now, it's Sac State proving to us how much really goes into communication, utility, use, and coordination and how much that plays into your ability to push. And they are definitely doing it piece by piece. You were, show, you were saying, Eli, how last round they went corner by corner working with each other to clear. And here, even now, Juan Judy on the defense, blocking off information from the Silver Dart with his own utility. We're just seeing displays of, of game knowledge left and right to just the upper degrees, really Sac State pushing the upper bounds of what, have, what I've seen so far in the Diamond Bracket. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's the value of experience. Sacramento State, you know, they're in the Diamond Conference, and sure, they did not perform extremely well uh, last year in the CVO before the split happened. But they've learned from all of that. They've worked to get better as a team, and you can see as they're coming back here with Trippy getting that kill on Magic, they are just playing with a confidence and a poise that is going to make them a threat to a lot of teams, especially teams that are trying to get themselves together and, and you know learn the game more. As we see Killjoy, they're taken out by Abel. Accuracy. Killjoy is able to get another one and spike planted. Tell you what, Spike only just now goes down. So Killjoy, even with that three health, has a chance to maybe set this up here for uh for the omen to still have a chance. You see that smoke coming out. It is Kiahi no and it is uh Killjoy. And there's Kiahi getting the kill there on Mitchell, so this is evened up. But you've got to move with some remaining. speed if you're uh, Hawaii, as the spike has been down for quite some time now. I don't know if they have time here. Kiahi gets the kill there on Darien. Shameful this is a close one. I think Kiahi's going to get it, though. Uh, yes, he yeah, is. Yeah. That was amazing by uh, by Kiahi and Killjoy. i got to point out that they, they kind of kept a track on Trippy's Hunter's Fury, right? Because it is a straight line, and that line leads directly back to you. So Kiahi, knowing that full well peaks B main to find Trippy, and then because Killjoy fell uh, to Darian, he was able to swing around and take that final fight with ease. Strong tactical, tactical decision making from Hawaii, getting themselves back into it. That's what they need to showcase here as they try to win themselves into a situation where the second half won't be as heavily slanted against them. They are down four rounds currently. They will be down at least two rounds when we when we begin the second half. But they've got a couple of rounds to make something of themselves. It will be without Kiahi, at least for now. As Darian gets the kill there. And you hear Darian's Rays ult come up. They're going to clear out the A site. And get themselves set up here for another Sacramento State plant. Trippy finding the headshot on Magic. Abel is going to go ahead and find unsubscribe from the Rafters. It is Juan Juni in the back with the knives. He's going to need to get these picks one by one. He finds Quiz, but Quiz's bullet finds him. Abel with another kill onto Killjoy. Hawaii falls. Another round to Sac State. Eight to three. Five round advantage. They're looking quite strong tonight, Eli. Absolutely. Juan Juni kind of caught in no man's land as far as the rectangle goes. And I understand why that happens. You have to cover two different potential spots. And it's just a 50-50. You really can't afford to play when the opponent only has to see you and tap once to get the kill. Like you mentioned, in this last round before the, for the swap, Sacramento State has an opportunity to basically put their foot on the neck of the University of Hawaii. If they can get this last round, if they can win this and head into the second half 9-3, to three, you know they'll be feeling very confident. As Kiahi takes a lot of damage, Juan Jun is down. Oh no, he gets caught by the nade! Oh, he dodges just out of sight, but his information is given away, and he falls. Abel catches him right at the last second, 
Magic finds Darian three for four. Hawaii is down one. Quiz is lurking and gets caught. Unsubscribe evens the odds, but Abel is popping off in the meantime, finding two more. And this is the ace. That might have been the most low key ace I have ever seen. Abel just we just found everybody. <laughs> Abel, just Abel, Abel He's literally. Our man. Abel literally moved in and out of the camera's view like a horror movie villain. Just like when we weren't looking, Abel was slaying and then, until the very end and there was only one person left. Oh my goodness. Well, that's how you want to close out a half, no doubt. As Abel with the ace, Sac State up 9-3. to three. Well, I'll ask you this, Ash Kind. It may be a bit unprofessional, but I just want your opinion on this. Do you think Hawaii has a chance to pull this back and get this, you know, evened up or get this closer to an even game before we can, before uh, Sacramento State can finish off this half? I absolutely think it is possible, but it all depends on Hawaii's performance, right? This changes up the momentum, and here, as we see it, Darian finds two, Kiari finds one, one, Juni, another on Darian, and here we're at three for three. Juan Juni here finding Trippy to kind of put himself in a better position. And Hawaii is now answering your question for you, Eli. They have found the momentum they needed due to this shift in the ties. Whenever we switch halves, everything is reset, right? So as long as their mental stands strong, anything is possible. And they're showing that they are not willing to give up without a fight. Well, we mentioned it for Sacramento State. It was one corner, one angle at a time for Hawaii. It's... A big team fight victory to start out with here. Now the spike is down. They want to hold this and get this round. But Quiz is going to be very dangerous here as they push up through the back. They find two and get out of the way here as they push the spike. Mitchell gets stopped, but they got over the halfway point. Quiz covers, gets the revenge, and it's a defuse for Sacramento State. What a retake. That was an amazing retake. Quiz definitely turning that round entirely into Sac State's favor. And I would even say is accredited that entire round. It is absolutely insane how quickly Sacramento State kind of got into this chaos and ended up on the bottom and then yet even still keeping calm. Quick is making that sort of just ballsy play to push through that smoke and find someone. And it was just unfortunate for uh, unsubscribed to kind of be okay. met on the other end of that frenzy barrel. It's, uh, the way it goes here, Sacramento yeah, yeah. State just not... They're, they're, it feels like even when they should be out of a round, they're not quite, right? As we see Trippy, well, that's one way to put somebody else out of a round. Gets a shot there with the Marshall and sets Juan June down. It is a one-shot body shot if there is no armor. And Kiahi is going to go ahead and even up the odds with that pistol headshot on Darian. Looking like a classic. Quiz with the Spectre headshot on unsubscribe and kind of aggressively positioned is uh hawaii against him but he's gonna fall off for free mitchell moving upwards towards b main to kind of cap it off and make sure no one goes there kiahi a little bit late on that rotation so he's gonna be met with mitchell mitchell hears him coming up and now it's a matter of clearing the yellow box and what happens over here well, let's see this situation is kind of gets into one of the things that we didn't talk about too much with agent selection but uh we see it a lot on icebox there you know, not a lot of, you know, not seeing any Cypher, for instance, the utility, the the info gathering agents are more about space control than seeing around corners as Icebox can be a very cramped map. Left. I think that's one of the reasons why people may have some, you know, a lot of dislike for it. But it honestly feels like something Sacramento State has been able to kind of like exploit as far as a weakness in the University of Hawaii is to see able clean off that, uh, clean out that round, you know, it feels like Hawaii is suffering for not seeing the map in a bigger picture. Do you have any thoughts on that or, you know, that aspect of this map and how agent selection goes on it? I think Cypher is, is less picked uh, because of all of the all of these different corners, right? You only get two tripwires, and so it's not really worth it to kind of pick an entire character for that information network that can be so easily dismantled because of the way Icebox is. It, at, it, is, it is easy to kind of rotate around and give a false sense of, of information, even with Cypher. So I think it's just sort of become something of like a, well, he's not as useful as we'd like him to be, so we're just going to go ahead and throw him, in, throw him into the trash and pick someone else. 
see Darian right now has actually a great angle. If no one looks up, Darian has a great shot at getting multiple kills. They find three. Oh, what a position there from Darian. They're going to get taken out by Kiahi, who got two during all of this. Hawaii has actually stayed in this. Kiahi secures the spike. And leave. So in the meantime, I think Hawaii needs to secure themselves some guns, and so they do. Kiahi gets the spike down. Now Kiahi really has a... It's got a tough task lined up for him, but the spike is down at least. And though our Sacramento State does know that there's an intruder on the A site, they don't know where exactly until now. Yeah, he takes out Abel. Mitchell will raise up this wall here. Tap on the spike. Mm. Beautiful shooting there from Mitchell. They add time. Yeah, he's so low from other fights. It is Mitchell who gets the defuse, and Sacramento State now moves to match point of 12 to 3 against Hawaii B. So right now with with uh, Hawaii on the low, I would like to say that they need to figure out a way to kind of kind of more effectively trade out Juan Juni, uh, as well as is it uh, as well as Magic. And, or either get Juan Juni on the operator and kind of get those long picks that, that can sort of enable them to pierce through the tight defense that Sac State has. See if that comes to pass here as you see Juan Juni trying to get that blade storm up and working, but they don't and they get taken out there by Quiz. It's another early round uh, death there for Juan Juni who has not been able to have the impact we're used to seeing. Like, let's show you how well Sacramento State has been working as they keep that jet. And the tight wraps. Falls to the rest of Hawaii now to find out which way they want to go. We see unsubscribed here moving around the left side. Quiz gets a peek, gets shot, and thinks better. You know, just a you know, quick look around. I'm not liking how separate Hawaii is right now. We have Magic kind of pushing up alone. The rest of his three teammates now coming together to kind of back him up. So hopefully we'll see some of those trade outs I was talking about, but still these angles are not exactly supportive of each other. Here we see magic fall. Trippy just barely seeing Reyna's haircut and decides to give it a little bit more off the top. <laughs> yeah, Trippy said, you know, you kind of wish you were crouching it to come around here as they fall. Darian traded out with Kiahi. There's the ultimate Mitchell. Takes out unsubscribed. It's Killjoy alone here against three, and you're not going to get it the against that split. There it is. 13 to three. Sacramento State with a dominant performance on Icebox. They wipe out Hawaii B and get themselves a 13 to three victory. Here's some quick games today, Eli. People don't like Icebox. Uh, they're moving fast. They want to get, get it done. We know momentum has a. You know, I. Momentum is a big part of Valorant, especially, I think, when it comes to, you know, team-based play. Not just ranked, but teams, because it's it's one of those things where once you get the ball rolling, it can be really hard to stop. And I think in keeping with that, we, we didn't really talk about it as we got into the second half. But looking back, that thrifty round, Sacramento State won, really turned this whole map around. I think that might be the round to look at if you're Hawaii to really lock in on how Sacramento State was able to get back into that round, win it, and then, you know, in general, just you know, keep that momentum going. Although, to your point, Ashkan, you mentioned it, the angles, the difference in angles between the two teams may be having something to do with that. Absolutely. After watching yesterday in the Immortal Bracket as well, I'm kind of like look coming coming over here in the Diamond Bracket with a newfound insight into, into how these teams are playing, the differences, and what's making these uh, just these differences in levels, and definitely Sac State is showing that upper level evolution. And Hawaii just needs to kind of do a couple of VOD reviews and definitely come back with a vengeance because we have seen them do uh, make some talented plays. I remember some of their bind games earlier this season, so I'm not counting them out just yet. They, they just got to do a little bit of hard work. Yep, we are entering into the second half of the season, folks. The opportunity for these teams to get themselves situated and upright is uh, coming to a close, but. 
We know they're looking to go into the tail end with some momentum and look strong as we get closer and closer to the end of the season. We are getting closer to the end of the night. We've got one more match for you all before it is all said and done, and that will be between, be between California State University, Dominguez Hills, and Cal State Long Beach. It's a SoCal battle as the heart of Los Angeles County goes at it. We will have that match on the other end of this break for Ashcon. I am Eli the Curry, Collegiate Valorant League at the Gamers EDU, and we will see you all on the other side of this break. Welcome back, you filthy Valorant casuals, to the Collegiate Valorant League, hosted by the Gamers GDU, hosted by me. I am your part-time host, slash full-time Reyna Lovebot Queen B. Tonight, we have one match left for you guys. We will be ending the night with DH Gold versus Long Beach Black. But before we get into your regularly scheduled Valorant bloodbath, I did want to welcome all of you into the end of week five. Week six will be starting next week, but, but I still did want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors. We would not make it to week one without them. A big ol' thank you to HyperX, MSI, Team IQ, Ritual Motion. These are just some of the organizations that are not only supporting us in our mission to showcase the talent that all of these collegiate players really do have, but for also helping us spread awareness about mental health within the gaming community. It is one of our main focuses here at the Gamers EDU, and we really really do appreciate their support you can find all of their information down in the panels below along with exclusive discount codes and offers made exclusively for you guys for you guys in the cbl community so make sure you check them out while you still can and now before i pass it on over to your very wise you're all knowing you're all seeing casters the lovely ash Khan and eli the curry i'm gonna send you guys on one last quick commercial break make sure you're doing that hydrating thing you're doing that posture check thing and i'll see you guys in chat bye guys <laughs> Cause you 
but don't allow them to don't allow them to break you you're amazing the way you are i can see those days are falling but don't allow them to Don't allow them to, don't allow them to break you. You're amazing the way you are.
felt this way less If anything it's you that caused this When I keep falling through my heart cracks It's you that turns around this whole mess I try to fight my way through darkness If anything it's you that stop this When I'm surrounded by the heartless It's you that turns around this whole mess
to break you You're amazing the way you are I can see those tears for them But don't allow them to Don't allow them to break you You're amazing the way you are Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our final match of the night. This is the Collegiate Valorant League uh, brought to you by the Gamers EDU Diamond Conference. I'm Eli the Curry, joined by... Yours truly, Ashton. We are getting ready to wrap up our final match of the night. It is a SoCal Classic. It will be California State University Dominguez Hills going up against Cal State University Long Beach. So a couple of uh, kind of L.A. County... Uh, base teams here going at it going to be really close by and they're going to be in close proximity on one of our favorite maps in all of the cvl of course it's icebox all of our matches for this week have been played on it um ashkin you and i were talking a bit before uh you know during the break here um just talking about teams and, and what it's like playing in a team i would if you could give us a little bit of what it's like working with a five stack for competitive play and and how it can differ from ranked q uh, for those folks who may not have experience with that definitely if uh, if you're playing in a five stack the communications are or at least should be much more integrated clear concise and active right you got to act as a unit with your team in solo queue you're usually anywhere between one to five strangers kind of just trying to play off of each other. You don't know each other. You're just doing your own thing. But when you're working as a five stack, you're trying to review and, and create an order uh, and a sense of uh, confidence in what will end up being chaos, right? In Valorant, when all the utility goes out, it begins to start looking like Overwatch and you need to be able to navigate with your five stacks. It all comes down to the comms the practice and the precision your uh, differences that you just won't get in a uh, in a game of four other random people. All right, there you go. The expert analysis by our expert caster, Ashkan. See the agent selection here. Lon, who broke my heart. I thought we were going to get an Astra sighting. Instead, they're going to go to Omen. I can't disagree with the utility, but I can disagree with you playing with my heart. We're going to see Chris there on Killjoy. Dongle rocking the Reyna. Zero will be running Jet. And Sean will be running Sage. So we're seeing Sage in all three of the matches thus far. And on both sides here. That's on the side of Cal State Long Beach. You see Sammy Sosa there with the Sage. As well as Silva from Michael. Dovin with the Jet playing on the Reyna. And Rainbow. Change the things up. No, we haven't seen. Sort of thing. Was the last time? Ashcott, what's the last time you can recall? I'm trying to think. I really no. don't think seeing brim. I, I can't. I'm trying to remember. I can't. Nope. No brimstones uh, that I can recall. And honestly, I mean, it's refreshing. I I was telling you beforehand. I was expecting um, Rainbow to play Viper on this map because I've sort of experienced firsthand how he can play Viper. <laughs> Uh, he's kind of nuts with it, but, you know, Brimstone is just as good, and, and I'm happy to see it, as long as it's, you know, not the same five characters over and over. Yeah, I mean, it brings a different utility. We mentioned the difference playing in a five stack versus playing in ranked, and you see right here, as this push begins, those smokes come in exactly at the time of the push. They, you know, cut off the eyesight there. They allow the spike to go down, so Rainbow already paying dividends with that agent selection. 
as it is Long Beach on the attack to begin. So you see Zero gets first blood for the uh, map though. They take out Dovin there. Very aggressive dash onto the box and so he's gonna get taken out by Plan and Plan finds a second one in Dongle but it is Shan who will take out Plan. Moikul with the uh, Shan and the crits for the win. Devil kill the bomb. Gets diffused by Lon and he finds Rainbow in the smoke. Michael is gonna go ahead and take out Long. I okay, I said Michael, Michael, Michael. Just Michael. Uh, Michael. Okay. Michael. I think Michael. It's kind of a joke, right? Michael. Michael. I'm assuming. Otherwise, maybe we just offended somebody and they're upset. And if that is the case, we do apologize. But they do not give us. Uh, <laughs> we do not get pronunciation guides. We the smooth brain casters. We really, really would <laughs> hope to get those. By the way, if you're a member of the Collegiate Valorant League or you are. A family member of the Cleveland Valorant League, or are you just a fan, right? If they have one million fans, and one of them they have a hundred, I'm one of them they have one. It's just me. If they have none, then I'm dead. If that's you, and we're saying your favorite player's name wrong, let us know in the chat. We will correct that as soon as possible. Uh, what needs to be corrected, however, for Long Beach is, uh, you know, the post spike situation. They got themselves situated well, and then that defuse came through. Playing, getting another kill here to set them back up, but they need to. Uh, Tighten that up here as the spike goes down. They cannot afford to have many more miscues like that. Domingo's Hill really rectifying the situation. They're not letting the round go down if they already have the Spectre advantage. And so even though the spike was left ticking, they're not going to leave it ticking alone for long. Zero here on the bomb, finding the last ult orb he needs to pull out the knives and definitely set himself up for a great bonus round. Round three, Domingo's Hill's going in with four Spectres. We'll see what Chris for the win is going to do with the money he has left over. And of course, we're going to see Long Beach take out the rifles for the traditional round three. I don't know, swing back? Yeah, it feels like that, right? The bonus round as it's called, but it's really the, you know, I don't know. It's like the do or die round for the team that is down 0-2, right? Because if you lose this here and your economy is now put up against the, the rifles on the other side, at that point, it's you know, all hands on deck. So I feel like this is, or maybe this is the round before do or die. I, I don't know. We, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll come back next week with something stronger. Yeah, we need, we need a solid economist or something. What, uh, edi uh, etymologist? Uh, what is it? Et etymology? Somebody come et up with words? Wordsmith? Etymologist? I don't know. <laughs> We're having fun, folks. It's Friday night. But it is a slow push here in the third round as Long Beach is not looking to give up too much information. They do have the weapon advantage. See that rainbow? Ooh. Had eyes on Chris, but it was a little scant. And Chris is able to scamper away before too too much back can happen. Dongo here, though, going to get tagged up. It looks like Long Beach, Long Beach might want to push on this information they have on Dongo, who gets the flash out and the kill. They aren't able to get around that slow. Yeah, play in with the response. See Zero getting themselves out of danger there. Uh, Blaze Storm, however, does not net any kills. As Sammy Sosa gets this plant. That Sage Wall is absolutely critical to how Long Beach wants to enter into these sites and, you know, secure the post plant. Definitely working themselves the room as well to make sure it is not taken out before it hardens. Yeah, there's just. It, Long Beach has not lacked for infiltration into the site getting the spike down it's really so far been keeping it the pressure going but this time they're looking much stronger here as you see playing getting the kill dovin as well zero is there around the spike but there is not an angle for them as they fall and lawn is left alone to try to manage they can't play and gets a 3k and there's long beach getting their first win of the map so i'm a little bit conflicted there up uh, uh playing definitely kind of making good work with a 3k and, and and making his ult usage valid but on the other hand i you know it, it seems less justified since they should know uh dominguez hills is on that uh bonus round kind of stuck to smg so i'm a little bit conflicted in my head there what do you think eli i mean it's just hmm because when i think about how they play that round i think if you're dominguez hills you're just looking to get to see if you can get it right right away to see if there was going to be a push up and if not fall back 
See if you can draw somebody out of position. That's something that you and I have talked about has been an issue for teams in the Diamond Conference over the long haul. But uh, Long Beach is not quite as given to that. I think Long Beach is a school we've seen from all of their squads up and down these leagues. They've been pretty well disciplined. Lon is going to go ahead and take out Dovin very early on that off angle that I just learned about earlier. That he's also <laughs> going to get the res off, however, and is going to find Shan in the meantime, not allowing his his beautiful, beautiful teammate to fall in that glass creating process. Zero is going to come in, retake the site, and again, the operator is not a great retake weapon, but hey, one shot, one kill. If you get it off, you'll be fine. Plane is going to go ahead and hold screens along with the crossfire, and both Plane and Sammy are going to find a kill. Playing, dismissing themselves out of the way. Zero does find that operator kill, but I think maybe forced to save using the classic to enter the site. And drop the operator, leaves it out. Lawn finding two more kills and a beautiful spray down. Michael taking the kill on Lawn with the headshot. Well done there. Sammy Sosa got the res, the kill, the sage, resurrect, she protect, but most importantly, she attack heads. Sammy Sosa get the kill there, and it's two to two. And here evened up Long Beach after a couple of rounds that you would call frustrating. I would say you get the spike down twice in a row. You don't win either round. I would definitely say that's one of those things that kind of irks at you. But they've res they responded well. As you see the uh, Deagle out here for Dongle. It is a pistol round here for Dominguez Hills. They would love to see if they could get a round like Sacramento State did in their match against uh, Hawaii, right? They had that eco round, but you can see the difference in movement on the side of uh, Long Beach. They are not giving up. Oh, never mind. Dongle found an angle. But playing is not playing as he takes out Dongle as well as Lon. And down goes the spike. Chris for the win kind of lone there behind his turret with that sheriff and Shan is running on up getting ready to make a play but Plane is still there finding his third kill and Rainbow falls to Michael with another headshot. <laughs> uh, I, you know, we're having fun with it. The pronunciations and it's Long Beach right now looking like they're having fun with these executions. It's been five rounds in a row they've put the spike down. Three rounds in a row that they've been able to clutch it out. That bodes pretty poorly for Dominguez Hills over the long term, although you do see four ultimates on deck for uh, Dominguez Hills. A lot of utility for them to work with in this round. Absolutely, but let me tell you what's scary is that Long Beach is also ready with the post plant. The Hunter's Fury is up, and the uh, Brimstone ultimate almost there as well with two points off, so Rainbow is in position to sort of secure as long as that bomb goes down. Zero immediately forced off that aggressive generator angle Sammy Sosa healed from that initial damage that he procured. Shan going to go ahead and take off behind from behind the A site, giving it up and allowing the rest of Dominguez Hills to rotate on over. Long Beach very the... aggressively placed. Yeah, I just love the way Long Beach has moved off of this utility thus far. As we see Do uh, Dalvin getting in there, taking out Sean, getting the kill. They just moved around smokes, the slows. Uh, the, the Sage walls, they've been really, really well coordinated and it is paying big dividends. So we hear Dongle here gonna ult up, try to give Zero that coverage. I love that ultimate there. Look at this flank from Zero and it moves off of the ultimates. They allow those Boku Qs to come out, but it's Long Beach who is getting the better of all of this. They get to kill Zero left alone to work against Rainbow here and Michael and it's Michael who takes it. Long Beach. How did they? How did they? Right here. They had it. I'm telling you, that post plant ultimate is all they needed. They saw, you know, Dongle kind of expended that raise ultimate out there, but it was already decided before that round even began that hey, we got these post plant ultimates and we're going to use them. Now on the side of Dominguez Hills, you know, the Jet Knives and the, uh, the Resurrection are still up, but Rainbow is still too off uh, of his own ultimate as well as Sammy Sosa having their own revive and playing having the Empress up as well. So they're going to actually turn the tide here. Or, well, they're already ahead. They're going to keep the tide going with the way that they're playing here. Yeah, and the worst part about that, so much was invested. As we see playing get the kill there on Sean here. Zero. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Happily, they have smokes up. And what a great shot there on Dalvin for zero. But it may be for, it may be for naught. As you see, Sammy Sosa gets the kill there. 
and the ancient advantage still goes the way of Long Beach. Even after yeah. zero, what a really good shot on Dolphin. Tried to make something really heroic happen instead. Like you see Dongle and Chris, I think both on pistols here up against a four stack with rifles. Pretty long odds. And we see as Long Beach works their way up into the A site with no no contest, really. Both both of Dominguez Hills kind of oriented towards mid to B in the kitchen. And so the bomb's going to go down by Rainbow. He's going to get that extra ultimate orb he needs. Dongle kind of firing into the smoke to make sure no one's up there in the second floor. And, and an off-timing plane climbs up the rope and is found this time around by the spray down, but is going to get healed up to 100 health. The armor's gone, but still doing... Uh, yeah, he, he's been worse off. Yeah, I think he'll take that in a, in a rifle fight with, well, maybe not with a deagle aimed at your head as Sammy Sosa finds out the hard way. But if you're Long Beach, you can afford to have this fight as long as it takes a long time for it to happen. As playing gets their third kill, they find Chris. That leaves Dongle alone here. And now they just have to play the spoiler, try to put weapons on the ground. That won't happen. Playing gets the kill. And it is five to two here for Cal State Long Beach. We're kind of seeing that um, our, in my eyes, right, I'm seeing Long Beach sort of resemble uh, Texas A&M right now, where these fraggers are definitely performing where they need to perform. Plane is definitely a cut above the rest right now, but we can't discount, you know, their support players, Michael and Rainbow, because they're very clearly doing their jobs and the timings when they exactly need to be done. And I'm kind mm -hmm. of seeing a little bit of resemblance there for sure. So props to their coordination and play that they're demonstrating right now. It is something that often goes unspoken there, right? how important utility is for Slayers. We see their plan moving behind the drone. It was coordinated well so that Dongle's attention was split. That helps play and get that, you know, that first click off. As Sean will take out playing, however, take them down. Sosa gets the res here as Lon takes out and right after they take out zero so that's a trade out but with that resurrection that still leaves long beach with the advantage and Sean shan is going to take out play and turning that resurrection into null and they have their own resurrection sammy sosa is going to find long rainbow is going to take out chris dominguez hills has one left shan does pop the resurrection the molly lineup is going to go out onto the bomb but sammy sosa is going to take out shan and zero before it even lands i rainbow that closest to the pin though that was uh, uh <laughs> it didn't end up mattering but it was a nice smile shot right landed right right at the cuff I, I like the um i mean it did give us a good angle actually call him the cameraman because we, we got to see all of that happen from above you know <laughs> ain't that eye in the sky you gotta love it well you don't love it if you're dominguez Seals right now as they are down six to two trying to put together something here but you can see this the economy is just, it, it's what happens when you lose round over round. Everybody struggles to put stuff together. And even worse yet, anything you invest that was valuable to the attackers, you have to give up. You see that operator over in the hands of uh, Dolvin. They break down this wall. Moiko getting the tags up there. Going to call out a couple of agent positionings here. Chris for the win with the Nano Storm out, but it gets immediately taken out by Michael. They're going to go straight in. Long Beach afraid of nothing. Playing, helping, chipped away slowly. It is Rainbow who saves the day. Playing, finds one with an amazing flip to the head and dismisses himself out of danger. Dolphin taking out the person who was looking to trade play and Shan out here. And also falls to the rain of Vandal Headshot Dongle, last one alive on the flank. And this is the kind of timing where it's just unfortunate. You know, you can't really go for these flanks if you're going to be so late on the rotation. You have to just be with your team or ready to run through that flank and find whoever's trying to face you. I mean, you, you're you right on that. And it's just, but it's evidence of how well Long Beach is playing because that was a situation where playing was presented with a very respectable split, right? High and low. And he just aced it right he just perfectly responded to it the flick as you mentioned was incredible and not just that but the composure right after that flick to trust the aim and the execution to dismiss out of the situation as we see Dolphin open up this round with a kill Long Beach is just rattling these scenarios off one by one Sean gets rainbow tries to find another they get taken out 
by Sosa. Play in finds Lon once again, of course, play in getting the kills here. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, it's four to two, and Chris and Dongo have to figure out how to make a miracle happen. I need Dovin holding the post plant with the operator. Now, while the operator isn't great for a retake, it certainly is great at anchoring down, sitting on the site, and making sure an angle is not peaked. And here we go, Dong was taken out. And Chris comes in for a very aggressive play, is able to take out play, and as well as Dobbin on an unexpected turn of events, but Sammy Sosa is around the corner, ready to shoot, and he falls as well. Chris, what are you doing, you monster? Is he able to get it off? He has the ultimate in hand, but will he use it? He needs to get over this wall, and it is looking an arduous task. We have Moikel there in the corner, is going to go ahead and bring the arrow out. Chris, you need to get the bump to half. Unfortunately, he does not do that. Moigel peeks the corner, gets the headshot, and ends the round in what was almost the turnaround of the night. I, that would have been the MVP play of the night had Chris pulled that off fully. I don't know that it wasn't already with those three shots, but like you said, it's a little bit too little too late for that round. Whew, kept it spicy. Regardless, regardless chat, Please clip it. Give give your boy Chris some respect and clip that. Give him his 3K. I want to see it on TikTok by tonight. Oh, yeah. We definitely got to put some respect on the man name. But unfortunately, if you're Chris, you may not be looking for the win right now. As they move in with this eco, you see Dongo trying to pull up with the judge. Push short and get the kill. That doesn't work out. Zero's there on the marshal. We'll look to find something. They're gonna need a headshot or a couple of quick body shots against full armor, but Sean does get a kill there on play, and it gets healed off there by Sosa, who then finds Chris. Sean takes out Dobbin here, but look again at this. Every time it feels like we go through these team fights and it's three down for Dominguez Hills, four down in this case, and only one down for Long Beach. They are winning these fights so convincingly, leaving Dominguez Hills with almost nothing to work with in the post plant. You know, shake out once everything is all said and done. Absolutely. And, you know, I think I'm I'm going to have to credit Sammy Sosa, who falls right now, taken out by Zero with the Vandal. Four bullets left in the magazine. Michael yet again finding the last kill of the round. But, yeah, Sammy Sosa uh, on that Sage. I'm constantly that seeing these Sage orbs in just the right places, positioned to kind of deny so much area. And, and we saw that uh, in the last round with, I believe, uh, Hawaii kind of, you know, not not as successful, but definitely in that same vein, using those Sage Orbs to kind of halt and, and slow as much as possible and really making an effective use of those 100 credits. Yeah, well, you mentioned her as the meta pick for this map, right? Kind of the one agent we focused in on to talk about, and we're just getting an excellent showing of that. And all of these ways, as we see Dovin here, oh my goodness, with absolute certainty moving in to get the kill on Chris. Lawn, however, Get Sosa, and that's going to put the spike on the ground. But Zero can't make the turn against Rainbow. Who's just here for utility? Not me, says Rainbow. They get the kill. And once again, 30 seconds passed in a round. And look what we have here. It's Long Beach up four agents to Dominguez Hills. It's two lawn, though. Making a statement. They get another kill here. Playing picks off Sean, trying to move out of the kitchen. And I don't know here if you're lawn. I don't know. Yeah. You've got some hunting to do as the spike goes down, and it's 1v3. Lon is going to make the wise decision to uh, make his way to another angle and get some information. But Dovin, with his own operator, is not going to let anything slide. Operator in hand, again, not great for the retake. We're going to have to see how this all plays out. It is a slow, intense match. Lon is able to find one running around, Rainbow kind of baiting out the information there. And it's Dobbin on site who spots Lon and just takes him out with the classic, ending that dream short and sweet. Well, there is as dominant around as you are likely to see. 10 to 2 for uh, Cal State Long Beach. They are in dominant shape here. Only need three more rounds to finish the map and end the icebox nightmare for all of the schools this season. <laughs> or uh, this week, I should say. Uh, but if you're Dominguez Hills, you're not looking to give up just yet. They are on the attacking side. It has paid dividends for a lot of teams thus far. But here. we'll have to see what happens here as we begin here. the second half. 
Indeed, maybe we'll see Dominguez Hills pull off what Hawaii could not and turn around Here. this momentum into their favor. I mean, we've seen worse, we've seen harder comebacks before, and so there's no doubt we may see one again. It all comes down to this minor play, this round here to change everything up. And here we go. That's the first pick playing down with the classic headshot. Dobbin unable to find IQ Shan. It is Rainbow who finishes the job. But Dongle is going to trade out Rainbow. And Dongle goes down to Dobbin. Three for three. And things are getting chaotic across the board. Sammy Sosa taking out zero. And Chris finding Dobbin. Sammy taking out Long. It is possible. And Moikle. He's, he's always showing up at the end of these rounds. He's he's always there. This has been some uh, just exceptional shooting there. Uh, as the job is done, Michael coming in at the end to clean it up. But just the, the, the play there from Sammy Sosa, I feel like, to keep things in range, right? Two kills and then able to get the defuse. Obviously, uh, Michael going to feed your Sage if you want her to get her ult first. But, man. Well, if you're uh, Dominguez Hills, it's time to pitch in. You got to figure out what you're going to do. You got to see them. They're buying up early here. Not what you would normally do in this situation, but they don't have much of a choice. Only two more rounds to go for Long Beach to secure the map and the match. I like what they're doing here. Uh, Dominguez Hills is pulling out the Spectres. They're forcing up against knowing full well that Long Beach is forcing. And so they're going to go ahead for these gunfights and kind of hope for the best and really it's going to come down to what happens here and now a lot of health being dropped across the board but no frags being finished here we go zero finally draws first foot on dobbin another one on play and sammy sosa is going to trade out dongle we have a very aggressive push over here sammy sosa to find one lawn again evening it out and then finding an advantage and taking out michael and Sammy Sosa as well. Lon really leading the pack here, Weapon making sure that what needs to get done gets done. It's a great job done by Lon to get in there, fix up the issues, get these fights won. You mentioned how this was a force up on the side of Dominguez Hills. They didn't have a choice. They responded well and they get themselves just a little bit more space to breathe. As you see, Long Beach is going to opt for the slower play. They have a lot of rounds to work with. They're going to opt to save, so the pressure now builds ever so slightly on Long Beach to get closer to finishing this out. If you're Dominguez Hills, you got to execute almost every round here. You only got one to give before match point kicks in. Oh, and look at this play and has found an angle. They get the shot there on lawn. It takes two, but with nobody in a position to respond because Dominguez Hills was pushing up so quickly towards the, eight, uh, the B site. We'll see what that agent disadvantage does. Oh, no, zero. Not like that. Long Beach is falling one by one. It is now Dongle. He needs to find this kill and a heal to kind of make do with what he has. Rainbow is very low, so it is a possibility. All it needs is one shot. The bomb is being defused. The blind goes out. Down goes Dobbin, and here's a very, very possible round. He yeah, just this is himself off, giving himself the element of surprise. Pings the bomb to kind of reposition and force Dongle to be. <gasps> Oh, Down. No. Oh. Clutched up. Dongle gets it done. What a job there by Dongle. They had the weapon advantage, but they navigated it so intelligently. As you mentioned, did not overreact to hearing the spike getting pinged. Knew that there wasn't at the halfway point. They were going to have plenty of time to turn the corner and play the life lead to take out Rainbow. Mingus Hills saving another round, keeping themselves in it, but we see the guns coming out here on all sides. Starting to wrap up here, Ashcon. I think if, if this is in play, right? If the Mingus Hills can get this round, maybe they can put themselves in a position to rattle off a couple of more and make this competitive. Absolutely. I mean, Long Beach is looking good right now with that Sage ult being up and Rainbow being too off the Brimstone ult. But definitely Dominguez Hills has finding their groove, finding their rhythm, and is going to find the first pick zero on plane with the Phantom. Rainbow now rotating around or rotating off to kind of give the site, wait for his teammates to retake. Dominguez Hills is on the site. All five players left alive. Zero not healed quite yet, but we may see it soon. Dobbin here on the flank with that Cloudburst going out, rounding the corner. His position is known. Sammy Sosa throwing it out those slows. Again, I've been commenting on it. Definitely limiting the movement. Rainbow takes out Sham. 
Dobbin on the flank finds Chris. Sammy Sosa on zero. Dobbin again on Lon Dongle. Sammy Sosa, Dongle yet again, left alive. Looking a lot like her last round, but it is different in the end. Dobbin takes out Dongle. The defuse goes out, and the 12th round match point goes to Long Beach. This is... I mean, this is incredible Valorant we are seeing right now. Not just from Long Beach. I, I do want to take this time to give credit to Dominguez Hills. They're on match point right now. Obviously, they're down really heavy. But you see the way Long Beach is playing. They are having to put it all together. And they are executing that way. It's causing a really one-sided scorecard. But you have got to give credit to both of these teams. As they are putting on a hell of a fight. But all the same, it's Long Beach now on match point. Looking to close this out and send us home. Well, send us to a ritual. different room. I think everybody's probably home right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Love that little ritual Long Beach did at the beginning, kind of bringing up their morale, show, giving us a little bit of a show, and trying to end it off. Here we have the shotguns in play, perhaps going for maybe a little bit of a cheese here, maybe playing a little bit like uh, Texas A&M earlier in the night. Yeah, I mean, Texas A&M was memeing with heavy weaponry. I don't know. Bucky, though dangerous, isn't exactly on the caliber of Odin. On the other end, though, you see it's a move around to the B site, and it may be scouted here as it looks like Sova will be the first to engage with this. We'll see how that happens. They do smoke Michael off, but that at the same time tells Michael a lot as well as these shock darts go out, these arrows to try to get some intel. You see Long Beach now moving over to the B site. The spike has gone down. You see Long Beach going to break the wall, pushing forward towards the yellow box. Dobbin with the Bucky in hand gets rid of Dongle while the Bleer was going out. Shan here in B main trying to stop the push. Chaos goes out as Dobbin finds another. Chris is going to take Dobbin. Shan is going to find Michael. Sammy Sosa with Shan. Oh my god. The Killjoy ult pops off. Chris finding a second and third kill. Rainbow here unable to defuse as he walks up slowly. Time is ticking away, but Zero is able to finish it before the bomb even goes off. Chaos, the optimal word there is uh, Long Beach kind of, you know, disregarding that uh, that ultimate put down there by Chris. And so they're really just punished heavily at that, right? Three players detained. You have to wonder what their chances were if they could have gotten out of the way. All the same, they committed to it. You can see here, pistols, shotguns. It's match point still for Long Beach, but much less likely. And now all of a sudden, Dominguez Hills has a couple of opportunities, right? You've got a couple of rounds here. You can't afford to take off by any means, but you have an advantage. You have an idea of what the other team doesn't have available. Oh, but it's Rainbow and Sosa combining there on Dongo to get the kill. Zero is at least able to trade it out, but this is a dangerous start for Dominguez Hills. That indeed it is. Sammy Sosa working to heal playing from the initial damage. Zero finds Michael. Looking like a round six on the board for Dominguez Hills as they have a man up and definitely the weapon advantage is far too clear, but Sam Sosa is still going to go for an aggressive play. Does he know that Lon is on the right? He finds him and a little bit of a scuffle breaks out. Is he able to finish the job? Lon spraying down Sammy Sosa, unable to find the one taps that he needs to find both back away from each other and a repeat. Surprisingly enough, Sammy Sosa trying to chase after the kill, but it is Dominguez Hills rotating all the way across the map to plant the spike. Oh, what a wonderful peek there from Zero at a different angle to punish Dobbin, who was expecting the drop. Zero says, nope, reorient yourself along your Y-axis. Sosa there, as you mentioned, they had that long fight. They've got a Vandal here. Train harder. They're the hunting down, getting some kills there, take out Lon, but it's Zero's fourth kill of the round that finishes things up here for Dominguez Hills. Six to 12, it's another rifle round. For Long Beach, another opportunity for them to end this. If they can take it, hey, 13 to 6, that's a pretty commanding victory. If they don't, well, we get another couple of rounds of trepidation as uh, Dominguez Hills contemplates doing the very unlikely but not impossible. Here we see Shan holding on to that Sage Resurrection, used, waiting for the very last second to make it useful. Definitely. Looking like a positive impact here as match point is for Long Beach. However, Dominguez Hills is carrying the momentum. 
and doing what it seems that Hawaii could not. The information goes out. Michael sending out the Hunter's Fury and landing it on Shan. Now that Revive won't see the light of day, Sammy Sosa taking out Gondle. Michael finding a second pick. And now Dominion's Hills might just be shut down. Chris finding the trade on Lawn and playing. It's maybe too little too late. Chris flirted with greatness in the first half. They're going to need to do it again. And Sammy Sosa says, no, get it out of here. They finish the fight and win it for Long Beach 13 to 6. It is, as we mentioned, a dominant showcase here for the boys over in Long Beach. As they, uh, well, take a big lead. They win it 13 to 6. Ashcon, they finish off Icebox for the week. What are your thoughts here on that last match? And what are your thoughts overall on what we saw over the course of the night? So, for sure, in this last match, starting off with that, I think Dominguez Hill showed a very strong mental willpower to just kind of grit their teeth and keep moving forward. I, you know, they really show that they can change up the momentum when they want to. And you know what? There are some mistakes here and there and you know that happens to everyone but they are definitely the team to look out for when a comeback is possible because they definitely out of all the matches tonight show that they have that potential of course texas a&m sac state and uh long beach showing a very very dominant position as well so when we get into the brackets into playoffs i'm looking forward to seeing those teams go head to head Absolutely. It's going to be uh, it's going to be nice here as we get into the uh, second half of the season. As I mentioned, this was week number five. We are now officially done past the halfway point. But that is all for tonight as our final match has concluded. Excuse me. We want to take this moment to thank all of our partners, the folks over at MSI, as well as Clear Eye View, the California State University Entertainment Alliance, AIM Labs, HyperX, Ritual Motion, as well as Radiance.gg. And also thank you to all of the folks here and around the country supporting all of these collegiate Valorant, uh, you know, players. We really appreciate all of you who are in the chat, hyping it, hyping it up, making sure we say the names correctly and know which teams we're talking about uh, in those worst case scenarios. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun. On behalf of the Gamers EDU, I'm Eli the Curry, joined by Ashcon. And we will see you all Tuesday night when we uh, begin our play for the second half. Something